boom, ba doo, ba dee dee dee, boom. Oh, Lulu, little Lulu, little Lulu, with freckles on your skin, always in and out of trouble, but mostly always in. Using dad's necktie for the tail of your kite, using mom's lipstick for the letters you write. Little Lulu, little Lulu, there's no one quite as smart. Doesn't matter what you're doing, you're doing it with your heart. Shiny girls are dancing, there's a sparkle in your eye. When can we look forward to your next surprise? What a surprise! Oh, the clock says 7.30, it's really after 10. Looks like Lulu's been repairing it again. Blow your wild, Why? you know it's true, Lou. And you're very hard to tame. Little Lulu, we love you, Lou, just the same, the same. Little Lulu, we love you, Lou, just the Boys are usually too shy to tell girls they like them, which is weird considering all the gross things they aren't too shy to do around us. So here's how to recognize the signs. If a boy looks at you during a test at school, he likes you or he wants some answers. If you ask a boy something and he looks at his shoes, he really likes you or he stepped in something. And if he hangs around you going, he, 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 he likes you a lot, or you should get away fast. But if he throws spitballs at you and puts a snake in your lunchbox, he absolutely adores you, and he wants to get married. Or he's your brother. Boys Clubhouse. Step right up, folks. See Tubby get shot out of a cannon. Only five cents. Well, I'll even pay ten cents to see that. Yeah, let's go. Come one, come all. All this is gonna do, Tubby, is give you a splinter. This is a piece of high technology, Lulu. And if it doesn't work, we'll give you your money back. Deal. Fake! Introducing Cannonball Boy. Watch as he climbs into the cannon. <laughs> How can they shoot him out if he can't get in? What could be more thrilling than seeing someone get shot out of a cannon? Popcorn! One more crack out of you, Alvin! Ah, ah, ahem! Three, two, one, contact! Wowee! We have liftoff! There he goes, brave cannonball boy! Sailing through the sky, through the clouds, flying, flying! Falling! Falling! I didn't see anything. Did you see anything? No, you just have untrained eyes. He's moving too fast for you to see. Brave old Tubby. He didn't even take a parachute. I didn't see a thing. Fakers! Fake! I bet Tubby never left that barrel. Okay, Tubby Tompkins, come out. I know you're in there. Gosh, he's not in here. Careful, Lulu. We don't want you to get shot into space, too. Hi, folks. Here I am. Boy, I thought I'd never come down. What a show. Even Lulu couldn't believe her eyes. That's because I didn't see anything. Well, let me tell you, it's a good thing I landed on something soft. What? A pile of leaves? In a swimming pool? What? I landed here. We don't believe it. We want to see you do it again. Fake! Anything you want, Lulu. But it'll cost you another nickel. Contact! And there he goes again. Oh! Where? I didn't see anything that time either. Tubby never left that barrel, and I'm going to prove it. Oh, I do hope Tubby's all right. Guess I went straight up that time. 
We can do it again if you want. No way. You're not getting another nickel out of us. Do it again. I still can't figure out how those boys did that trick. <laughs> uh, we're gonna make a fortune with this stunt, fellas. Nobody will ever figure out how we do it. Hey, how's about another round on me? You mean on Lulu, Annie, and Alvin. <laughs> <laughs> so it is a trick. If I'm right, we're gonna find a hole in the ground and a tunnel. Hey, there's no tunnel here. I'm gonna get to the bottom of this mystery if it costs me my last nickel. There goes Tubby Cannonball Boy shooting across the sky. I still don't see anything. Don't worry, girls. We can do it again as soon as he lands. Tubby's taking an awful long time getting back. Maybe Tubby got stuck in a chimney. Maybe he's suffocating. Maybe Tubby got stuck in the tunnel. Shh! He never got stuck before. That was before he drank three sodas. <laughs> Where's the trap door? Where's the tunnel? Oh, <laughs> hi, folks. <laughs> so there is a tunnel after all. Tunnel? What tunnel? There's no tunnel. Tubby's resting. His mother told him never to go flying after a meal. Fake, fake! Whoa! Huh? Huh? Alvin! Alvin! Whoop! Uh, fellas, we got a problem. was right. <sighs> Thanks, Annie. We didn't find the tunnel before because it was hidden by a trap door. And Tubby didn't find it because I moved the cannon. Well, I suppose you want your money back. Oh, no. It was a very good trick. We enjoyed every minute of it. Hey, I want to see you get shot out of the cannon again. It'll only cost you two cents now, Alvin. This is supposed to be a love story. Listen, he had a crush on her. She was swept off her feet. She fell head over heels. But in the end, she had a broken heart. A broken heart? How? Sounds like she should have ended up in the hospital. <laughs> Last week, I could tell my parents were really excited about our trip to the zoo, because they kept saying things like, turkey, nice jaguar. What a weasel. Bunch of cows, and it's a jungle out there. Well, we never did make it to the zoo after all. Dad said there were too many animals on the road. Doobie, doobie, doo. Mother's birthday? But Father, the nose is all busted off. Broken centuries ago. Such history. Looks to me like you walked into a door. Antiques look better when they're broken, son. It means they're old. And your mother will love it even more when she sees the price tag. Wow. <gasps> Lulu and Annie. Oops. 
shooting arrows through our windows. Why, they could have broken something. Like an antique nose. <laughs> I guess we'll have to ask Wilbur for our arrow back. I've found your arrow, Lulu. Come in. Gee, this is really nice of you, Wilbur. And I thought you'd be mad. Lulu, that looks a lot like your dad, if his nose fell off. That's what happened. Your arrow wrecked Father's precious statue. Oh, Wilbur, I'm sorry. But where's the... the... nose? And look how much Father paid for it. Golly! Six dollars! It's more than six dollars. Look at all those zeros. Everybody knows zeros mean nothing. Okay, six dollars it is. But you better pay up or Father will be really mad. Where am I gonna get six dollars? Well, I've got most of the nose here. Maybe we could glue it back on. Or we could make a new nose. Oh, I can't make noses. We need a model. Hey, that statue did look an awful lot like my dad. So we'll use him for a model. Uh -huh. What a strange dream. Martians were trying to steal my nose. You could trick me, huh? Oops. <gasps> You've ruined my father's birthday present for my mother. And she just pulled up outside. Quick, glue it, glue it together. I can't wait to see it, dear. Uh, mother, um, happy birthday. Why, thank you, sweetums. We're about to unveil your mother's present right now. Father showed me your present this morning. He's really outdone himself this time. What? Oh, let me see. Let me see. Ta-da! Easy, Father. <gasps> oh, I just love it. Finally, a piece of modern sculpture in this house. I was so worried you were going to get me another broken antique. Well, I'm glad you like it, dear. Like it? I love it. I'm going to invite my RLACC friends over right now to have a look. Ah, uh, the Rich Ladies Auxiliary Collectors Club. <laughs> Won't they be envious? Hard to tell whether she was laughing or screaming. With what we did to that statue, probably both. Come on, Annie. We gotta put that statue back together right. Well, we came as soon as we heard, darling. My Harold won't buy anything under 500 years old. Dear, could you prepare the unveiling? Oh, what have you done? Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Van Snob. I just couldn't leave it like it was. And I'll get you the six dollars, I promise. Hurry! Uh, do it like it was before. All sticking out it, man, with that funny nose. Hey, that's my dad's nose. Wilbur, stall your mother. <laughs> uh, ladies, are you sure you're ready for a truly modern, artistic experience? Of course we are, dear. Uh, oh, but not everybody can handle art that is so modern. Whoa! Oh, oh, it's the most exciting oh, thing I've seen. Oh, oh, it's so awesome. awesome. Do it here. Oh, it's so oh, wonderful. <laughs> Here, girls, a little something to keep quiet. Or uh, rather, for your great sculpture. Six bucks for breaking an old statue and gluing it together all crazy. That wasn't crazy, Annie. That was art. It's grown-ups who are crazy. Ever wonder what grown-ups really mean when they talk? Well, wonder no more. It's all in the grown-up-ease dictionary. Ah, here's 
a good one. Oh no, I couldn't possibly eat another bite means, please keep filling my plate. And this one, I really must start exercising again, which means, there, I said it, now I don't have to do it. Oh, and this one's really sneaky. That's enough, you've had quite enough dessert. That really means, hee hee hee, go to bed, the rest is mine. My hair. Gee, Dad, who are all those good-looking fellows with Mom? Lulu, those good-looking fellows are me. But you don't have hair, Dad. Did you think I was born bald, Lulu? Isn't everyone? <sighs> I used to have a lot of hair, but I lost it all about the same time you were born. <sighs> what I wouldn't give to have hair again. Out my new chemistry set. I'm making, um, well, I don't know what I'm making yet. Whoa! Pretty neat, Tubby. But do you think we can invent something that could grow hair on my father's head? I bet we could. Let's check out the fridge for ingredients. We definitely need some eggs because they're good for your hair. And flowers will help, because all good shampoos smell like flowers. And broccoli, because if we don't use it now, I'm going to have to eat it for dinner. Shoot, kitty. Ugh. We're in business. Let's surprise him. Boy, will my dad be surprised when he wakes up and finds... His head's turned blue. Your dad's head turned blue. Lulu, what did you do? I didn't do anything, Tubby. You put it on his head. Oh, we gotta get it off. <laughs> What's going on? <gasps> George! What? What is it? Your head! It's blue! My head. It is blue. It's blue. Lulu Moffat and Tubby Tompkins. Oh. What is going on here? Huh? Uh, uh, Mr. Moffat's head is blue? Oops, I can see that. Now, what are you two trying to hide? Let's see your hands. I guess you could say you caught us blue-handed. <laughs> If I can't wash it off, I'll have to cover it. Bring all of it upstairs, Tubby. Uh, okay, Mom! Now down the drain it goes. Oh, oops! Oh. Sorry, Kitty. Boy, I don't see why everyone's so upset. At least Dad didn't turn green. Some of that hair. 
Well, we have to make some more hair tonic first. Then let's get over to Tubby's house so you can whip up a new batch. This is great. We'll give you a lift. Two drops, uh, one drop. We gotta get it right, Tubby. Ow, careful of my hair, Lulu. Sorry, Tubby. Hey, does it seem like our hair is still growing? Oh, you poor kitty. Boy, I wonder if we'll win one of those noble prizes for this. Or even better, a new bike! Lulu, Tubby, come up here! My hair won't stop growing. Forget the tonic, work on an antidote. I don't want that much hair. Let's get out of here. What we make has to do the opposite of what the tonic's already done. So instead of growing hair, it has to get rid of it, right? Then all we have to do is put in the opposite of what we put in before. Okay, uh, what's the opposite of eggs? A plucked chicken. And the opposite of sweet-smelling flowers? Is stinky extra old cheese. Now the opposite of yesterday's broccoli is... Today's broccoli. This is it. <gasps> there. Now to test it. We've done it, Dad. Hold on. Yahoo! I'm bold. Bold as an egg. Bold as a melon. Bold as a cue ball. I'm back to normal. Thank you, Lulu. Thank you, Tubby. Gee, Dad, you look better without hair anyways. Come back here, kitty! <laughs> Being bald isn't so bad. But if there was only a way, I could lose some of this weight. Hmm. One time at a fancy restaurant, I got this really bad waiter. He asked if I'd like the chef's salad. Why would I want to share someone's salad, I asked. Don't you have any brains? And you know what? They did. Boiled or stewed. Then I noticed that I had three forks. Well, I didn't want the waiter to make me share anything, so I swapped them all for dessert spoons and ordered a huge chocolate mousse so I could eat the body and save the antlers for the morning. Sort of like an Easter bunny. But what about your main course, the waiter asked me. When I told him I was best in math, he walked away. And he calls himself a waiter. He never even waited for me to finish my order. Thank <laughs> you.